Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your holy word, which has been written by you through your men who were chosen by you. We thank you for, for your message in all of those about our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that he is the greatest gift you have given to us from heaven. And he has been revealed through that word. And we pray that he will be written in bold letters in our hearts. As we sit in your presence to continue to meditate on true discipleship. We pray that you will speak to us, you will open our hearts, you will write the truth in our hearts so that we would be enabled to practice it. For we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Who said Amin should be given very loudly? Sunilangal is not here, so we don't have to do it, right? There used to be a song that they used to sing. Amen. Do you know that song? No, 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 no. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 You don't, you don't want, you don't like to say Amen, right? One more? Once more? One more time? Ready? One, two, three. Amen. 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 Good. Now, in the morning, I started this subject of discipleship. I know you are a bit tired and it is a bit hot around here, but we need to continue with our studies. And so I would like you to come back with me to meet the master. The disciple is the one who has a master, who wants to learn from the master, who wants to act like the master, who wants to look like the master, who wants to have the attitude of the master. That's what, that's what discipleship is all about. Now, do you have a coin in your hand? A coin? Give me a coin. Give me a coin. Give me. I will give it back to you. Don't, uh, trust me. Thank you. This coin has how many sides? Two sides. Now, Christian life is like this coin. It has two sides. The first side is the believing side. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe that He is your Savior. You receive Him and you are a believer. That is, that is one side. But is one side enough? Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Okay. One side is the believing side. Right? I know you are tired, but listen. The other side is what I call the behaving side. If this coin has writing only on one side, Will anybody in Mumbai accept this coin for anything? No. This is called a... What do you call it? If it has only one side. Hmm? Fake coin or counterfeit coin or... Hmm? What? Shout it out. Shout it out. Black money. No, it is white money. Silver money. But only one side. Now, Christian life has two sides. The first side is the believing side. That's how you start. But if it has only uh, inscription on one side, it will not be accepted by anyone. It has to have a behaving side also. The other side is the behaving side. So the believing side is fine. But if the behaving side is not right, this coin will be a fake coin in this world. Now, 
the behaving side is what i call discipleship you behave what do you believe you behave what do you believe now what do you believe with your heart you behave through your attitudes and your actions and that is where discipleship really comes in so you want your coin back okay i'll give you later trust me <clears throat> okay so how is your behaving side the behaving side <clears throat> side has to be <coughs> thank you mole god bless you the behaving side has to be like the behavior of the believer if you believe this you behave accordingly if you believe jesus is your savior and your lord and if he is your master you behave like jesus is in control of your life and that is why we need to learn to become his disciples so that we will believe on him we will behave like him believe on him behave like him and that is the secret of learning to become a disciple <clears throat> now we read a few verses this morning actually we read from first uh, john chapter 2 and verse 6 remember that verse would someone read it for me ah we if you believe if you claim to believe in him you ought to walk like him walk means behave like him the other verse we read was first john chapter 4 verse 17 the last part only what is that someone please you go okay as he is so are we in this world and to transcribe it to uh, myself i should say as he is so am i that is heaven's expectation about you and me god or jesus christ wants us to be like him here on earth that's why he gave you his own spirit the holy spirit has he given you 50% of his spirit to you 100% oh has he given you his power completely or 20% power completely he has given you his power he has given you his what spirit and then he said go and walk as i walked you understand me now this is how we start our walk as disciples now when we say that we walk like him the world will say oh i will give you whatever you want i'll give you position i'll give you prestige you know status in society i'll give you i'll give you uh, money positions i'll give you education i'll give you um, everything you want jesus says walk after me walk like me the world says don't worry i'll give you everything you need what does the disciple do he will say hey world i don't want anything that you offer i want to go and walk like my jesus what is the peculiarity about my jesus he had no place to lay his head the foxes had their holes the birds had their nests but jesus had 
not even a pillow and a mat. And he says, come and follow me, walk like me, talk like me, act like me, behave like me. And the world says, oh, don't worry about all of those things. I'll give you everything you need. And we say, no, I don't want what you give me, what you offer me. I want to go after Jesus and walk like him. And we need to be thinking a lot about this. Now, let me, uh, at the very beginning, give you some comparisons. First of all, uh, salvation, or say, sonship or daughtership, is for everyone. Whosoever will may, Whosoever will may come. All who are sinners, all who need to get saved, come. And become a son or a daughter. Come to Jesus, get saved. Come to Jesus and become a child of God. Come to Jesus and inherit heaven. Come to Jesus and receive uh, uh, the blessings that God wants to give you. This is for everyone. But discipleship is only for sons and daughters. This is the primary distinction. Secondly, how much time it takes for you to get, to become a son or a daughter of God? Two hours? One week. Like ABC? Over and then you become, right? How much time you take? Hmm? What? At that same moment. Very good. Wonderful. So this is like a crisis point. You become a son or a daughter at the split second. The moment you confess your sins and receive Jesus in your heart by faith as your savior, He comes in, within split seconds, you become a son or a daughter. Right? Right? You agree? But discipleship means you start by obeying the call to become a disciple and you keep on developing your discipleship till the very end. You get yourself renewed day after day and obey more, love him more, walk with him more, learn more about him and you continue to become a disciple. You never stop. What is the final point? Like in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15, you you grow unto the fullness of Jesus Christ. It is a process. Starts the day you obey Him and you go through the process of learning and studying and meditating and obeying and imitating and following and you keep on renewing your commitment to slowly become day after day more and more and more like Jesus Christ. That is discipleship. Okay? You understand that? Um, you become a son or a daughter at split seconds. But do you become a disciple over a period of time? Uh, if you want to use these words, like uh, you become a son or a daughter at the point in time. Split second. Discipleship, a period of time. Point in time, child of God. Period of time, you become a Disciple. <clears throat> now when you get saved, when you become a son or a daughter, who paid the price? The, the Lord Jesus Christ paid all the price for you to be a child of God. You didn't have to pay anything. This is like the uh, entry fees is free. You don't have to pay anything. All you have to do is to believe. But, to become a disciple, you have to pay the price. 
If you want to know him more, you have to spend time with him. Uh, to spend time with him means you take the time off from other things and you spend more time with Jesus. The more time you spend with him, the more you talk to him, the more you walk with him, the more you meditate on him, the faster you become more like Jesus. So you pay the price. So let me come back to my analogy. Entry fees is free. No entry fees. But the annual subscription is everything. You have to give all that you have. You have to give all your time. You have to give all your attention. You have to give all your commitment. You have to give all your desires. Everything that you have, you give at his feet. And you slowly become a disciple. That sounds tough, right? That sounds like you don't have any life in this world, is it? No, but that is the sweetness of becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. So, as uh, to become a son of God and a daughter of God, he paid the price. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. That's how what the uh, hymn writer wrote. But to become a disciple, you have to pay the price. Don't worry, he will help you. He is going to help you with his power, with his spirit, with his word, with the power of his resurrection. He is going to help you. But you still have to pay the price. Alright. Another distinction is that when you become a daughter or a son of God, you go, you go to the cross. See the Savior crucified for you. Accept Him and get saved. That's how you become a child of God. You go to the cross. But when you become a, you want to become a disciple, you carry the cross, put it on your shoulders and walk after Him. Carry the cross to become a disciple. Understand the difference? To get saved, where do you go? You go to the cross. To become as a disciple, you go and carry the cross. And we will explain on another day what is really meant by carrying the cross. But for you to quickly understand what it is, let me tell you, carrying the cross is experiencing the kind of rejection and resentment and abuse and uh, all sorts of other persecution that the world offered Jesus when he carried the cross. What did he get when he carried the cross? What did he get? They gave him a bouquet and a garland. Oh, wonderful Jesus. Is that what they said? What did they do? If you are truly the Son of God, come down. Right? They abused him. They called him names. They sang dirty songs about him. They criticized him. They blamed him. They said, uh, they, they mocked him. So when you carry the cross and you walk after Jesus, the world is going to say what? Hmm? What bad things? <laughs> uh, let me give you an example. <clears throat> Are you listening carefully? Okay, we have a three-story house. There are three brothers in a family. And they, they are each one taking one floor. One boy has taken the... The youngest boy has taken the ground floor. The middle boy has taken the middle floor. And the eldest boy has taken the top floor. Alright. Now the first boy is in the ground floor and we call it chicken floor. Chicken floor. Bombay fried chicken. You know what it is. Hmm? Ten, a tender chicken. Finger licking. You heard about it, right? You don't like it, do you? KV Simon Uncle? You like it? Oh yeah. This boy is sitting there. He is enjoying chicken. For what? For his? For his body's enjoyment. 
he is enjoying it he is saying oh wow wonderful finger licking chicken give me more give me more give me give me the drumstick right you want the leg right now the second boy he is at the middle floor he is sitting there listening to michael jackson or who who is the greatest singer here shreya goshal you girls like her right? or uh, another singer never heard him before what said hmm sonu nigam or whatever some other singer so this boy listen listen this boy is sitting at the middle floor and his both ears are hooked to the headphone and he is singing and dancing and enjoying and this fellow on the ground floor while he is eating the chicken he says my elder brother look at him he doesn't know the taste of this chicken budu no he is wasting his time he is listening to this meaningless music right and the middle level boy is saying my dear kid kid brother going after this chicken which he can get tomorrow also this music how can he forget this music hmm and then on the third floor sitting the eldest brother praying to jesus oh lord make me your disciple i just want to serve you i i don't need to eat that lousy frozen fried chicken and the fries i don't need to listen to this dirty music i am ready and willing to give it up you are my that's what we sang right you are my everything you are my all i am ready to give up everything this world is giving me in order to get you my lord i only want you i want to taste you i want to listen to you i want to enjoy you i want to meditate on you and then this uh, bottom level fellow is saying my eldest brother he is a he is a what do you call him buddhu buddhu right useless fellow he is full of bhakti devotion what will he get he doesn't know what he is missing right and then my other brother into this lousy music now they are all uh, the, these two brothers are accusing each other and also accusing the eldest brother who is at the top and the eldest brother is saying lord please touch the lives of my brothers they are into what the world is ready and willing to give and they are enjoying it but it is only momentary uh, once the chicken is over the chicken is over and then uh, and then the music is over that's the end of the story it is all momentary satisfaction but what my lord is able to give me something that is going to stay with me all my life i get to know him i am ready to give up everything that this world is offering me so that i would have my lord jesus christ for myself he is my everything everything he is my all he is my everything both great and small he gave his life for me he is my everything now how about you that is the question the cross that he carries is giving him the strength to say no to what temporary satisfactions the world gives in order to get something that he will never lose that is carrying the 
carrying the cross. The world will call you what? What did I say? Buddha, useless fellow. Bhakta, devotee. What is he going to get? He is wasting his time. He is wasting his life. But who is really wasting life? The other two people. They are, the one is strengthening his body. The other is strengthening his soulish, the human mind. Whereas the eldest brother at the Christ level, he is at the Christ level. The eldest brother is at the Christ level. The middle brother is at the music level or cricket level. He is watching cricket. What is he going to get? Temporary satisfaction. Once the sixer is over, the sixer is over. Right? You can only say for a few days, oh, that sixer was great. After two days, that sixer is over. Even that memory is, memory is, is gone. It's an old thing which gave me momentary satisfaction. Yes, my Speak. But what we find is that the world is running after all of this food, right? All of this music, all of this entertainment, all of these positions, all of these other uh, privileges that the world is giving. Whereas Jesus is saying, are you ready to give up all of those carrying the cross and follow after me? And say no to the world? So we, we have been finding distinctions. Uh, sonship, daughtership is for all. Discipleship is only for those who respond to the call of Jesus to follow him. Secondly, we said, that you get, you, you become a son or a daughter at split seconds. Right? But then, you become a disciple over a period of time. Are you tired? Are you tired? Okay. <clears throat> Thirdly, he said, uh, for you to become a son or a daughter, Jesus paid the price. But for you to become a disciple, you must pay the price. Jesus is going to, Jesus is going to help you with his power, his spirit, his word. He is going to help you. <clears throat> Fourthly, Sonship or daughtership means that you fill your house or your heart with Jesus. You are a, you are a, you are a starving person. You have no spiritual food. You, and Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. You open, he comes in, he gives you enough for satisfaction. You fill your heart with Jesus when you become a son or a daughter. But when you are a disciple, you take up the broomstick of the word of God with the help of the power of the spirit of God, clean up the whole house so that Jesus can be given the throne room of your house. When you, when you become a disciple, Jesus is your Lord. He is your master. You obey him. And for him to sit on a dirty chair, it's not good, is it? Dirty chair of environment, dirty chair of corruption, dirty thoughts, dirty magazines, dirty websites, dirty stories, dirty friendships, dirty desires, you cannot make him sit there. So you take the broomstick of the word of God and clean up the house. He said, Jesus, I have cleaned up my house. Please come and sit there. That is discipleship. You make your life worthy of the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, sonship or daughtership means I go to where do I go? Where do I go? Hmm? What? Let's all stand up. Please stand up. Put your Bibles on your uh, chairs and stand up.
And I know it is hot, but stand on the toe. Stand on the toe. And now stretch your hand. Stand on the toe. Stretch your hand. Go up. Stand on the toe. And then, don't. Okay, okay, come, come back to the. Go up again. Come back. Go to the front. Again. Down. If, if you have gotten over with your sleep, have a seat. If you are, if you are still sleepy, Ask your friend sitting next to you to give you a pinch. <laughs> Ask for a pinch. Don't, don't give it. Okay. I, <clears throat> all right. All right. Now, as a son or a daughter, you go to heaven, right? You go to heaven. When you are a disciple, you help others to go to heaven. That is the mark of a disciple. A disciple attracts others to heaven. Alright. Now let's keep moving. <coughs> let's first uh, read Mark chapter 1, verse, verses 16 to 20, slowly. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, along with that, let's read uh, two verses from John's Gospel, chapter 1. John's Gospel, chapter 1. Let's read verse 29. Okay. Now, John the Baptist was standing at a junction at Palestine. And uh, he had two of his disciples with him. I don't want to explain further, but uh, he, their names were Andrew and John. Andrew and John were the disciples of John the Baptist. Are you listening? Are you listening? Yes. They were standing at one junction and then Jesus of Nazareth was walking by. Okay, now, you, you both come. Both of you come. Come. Koshimati uncle, I want you to walk that way. Quickly, come. Oh, okay. Johnny uncle will walk. Come on, come on, both of you come. Hey, Thomas, come. This is Andrew. This is, uh, come. This is John. Johnny Uncle, please walk that way. You come this side. These boys don't even move. Okay. Now, everybody listen to me. Oops. The phone is gone. Okay. Don't worry. You walk. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Okay. You understand how it happened? Okay. Have a seat. Verse 35. Sneha. Read verse 35. Chapter 1, verse 35. The next day John was there again with two of his disciples. 
When when he saw Jesus passing by, he said, "Look, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God." When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. So this uh, Jesus was passing by the next day, and uh, Andrew and uh, John were there. So John pointed out to Jesus. and these two young men john and andrew simply went after jesus right okay and then next verse turning around jesus saw them following and asked what do you want so jesus was walking and these two men were walking after jesus jesus turned around and asked yeah What do you want? Well, who are you looking for? And they said, "What did they say?" Rabbi, where are you staying? Yeah, Rabbi, where are you staying? Jesus said, "Come and see." We don't know where he was staying. Maybe under a tree or in a cave or some place. So they went went after him, stayed with him, talked to him. found out that he was messiah and they established a spiritual relationship with them no so with him that was the first encounter the first time they met each other all right but then let's now quickly go to mark chapter 16 now mark chapter 1 verse 16 You first meet Jesus, establish a relationship, get to know Him, find out who He is, accept Him as the Messiah, take your brother Peter to Him. All of those things happen. You know the story. I am not repeating. Mark one sixteen. Yeah. Next verse. Yeah. Yes. So here, Andrew met Jesus. Remember, when John the Baptist pointed out to Andrew that is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. he and john went after him they met they talked probably all night they talked and they found out that this was the messiah they established a relationship the next morning andrew went and brought his brother hey hey simon we have found the messiah come see so he also came established a relationship there was a name change right his name was changed but then what happened then what happened come to mark chapter 1 verse 16 what happened tell me what happened they went they went back to their original fishing business they were fishermen so they went after doing their own thing and jesus what did he do he walked by that sea shore he knew where these brothers were he saw them fishing right what were they doing fishing they were fishing they were having a livelihood they were making some money to live a decent life Jesus met them and he said something what did he say hmm? follow me i will make you fishers of men what did they do what immediately means what ah uh, without losing any any time not even a moment 
not scratching the head and let me think about it. Right? Uh, Jesus, I will, I will think about it. Let me finish this catch and let's sell the fish and clean the boat and sell it and then the net also we will sell and then we will come. Now you go. I will, we'll come later. Is that what they said? Is that what they said? They, they did not worry about the consequences of that unfinished business. They immediately went after him. They forgot all about the fish and the net and the boat and the money and how they would survive the next day. And they had faith in the one who called them and they just followed him. Nice, huh? Nice? Is that nice? Yes. And that is the call of discipleship and that is the the obedience of discipleship. When he calls, we, hmm? we should follow, we should obey. Immediately, we should obey. Okay, let's read on the same uh, verse 17 now. Yeah, next verse. Yes, straight away they left their nets and followed him. Next one. Next verse. Yeah. Oh, there were John and James, another two brothers, who were with them. Their father was with them. And then, who else was with them? Hmm? Read on, read on, read on. Yeah, keep reading. Ah, so they left their father and their servants and their boat and their net and all they had and they went after him. Was it immediately? Immediately. When he called, they did not think about the consequences. Oh, what will happen to my fishing business? What will my daddy say? What will my mummy say? Uh, what will these uh, hired servants, these employees say? What will happen to my boat? What will happen to my net? They did not think about any of those. They straight away marched after Jesus Christ. All at once. Without any delay. Without any delay. Instantly. Because the call was so powerful. It was full of love. And he said, if you know me as your Savior and your Lord, I want you to follow me. Come after me. And they followed him. They left all their assets. They left all their relationships. Father, hired servants, colleagues, friends, Everyone. What would the people around say? Oh, this Andrew and uh, this John and James are Buddhists. Why couldn't they simply uh, do some good fishing business, make some money and also believe in Jesus? Was that not enough? Was that not enough? Hmm? No, it was not enough. The love of Jesus was so strong and the person of Jesus was so wonderful and great that when he called, it was not enough to eat the chicken and also serve Jesus. To listen to the music or watch the cricket and still follow Jesus. Give up all of those things and didn't want to care what the other people will say. And they very bluntly 
very strongly and firmly without any delay they went after jesus christ so they they decided to forgo all their future prospects what will happen to you tomorrow how will you eat and who is the one who is calling them matthew chapter 8 and verse 20 matthew chapter 8 and verse 20 Uh, he, here is a, a, the gheribi of the gheribis calling these good businessmen to leave everything and follow him and they follow him and the p- people around will say the same thing that this brother at the chicken level and the cricket level will say to the brother on the top floor are buddhu why do you want to do such a stupid thing Why don't you do all of these things enjoy everything that the world gives still follow Jesus Jesus said no you cannot follow me like that you cannot follow me like that the the secret of that following Jesus is very very interesting let's read uh, Luke chapter 14 Luke chapter 14 We will read verse 26 and 27. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brother and sister, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Yes. And yes. Okay, that's enough for the time being. If anyone comes after me, and not hating his own father mother wife wife if you are married children brother sister they are all not so bad but the last word his own life what is this that this jesus is asking us to do money listen listen what is it that this jesus is asking us to do hating daddy my my own dear beloved sweet appa my sweet little mummy who is always waiting for me calling me all the time giving me all the nice food and crying and praying when i am sick right and then my brother brother not so bad because he always fights with me so i i already have some problem with him but still he is my brother right then sister oh my mom and dad love her more than me so that's okay is that right but those are all all right how about my own life jesus says if you don't even hate your own life you cannot be my disciple you cannot come after me what does this verse really mean now we are thinking about andrew simon peter john and james who gave up all they had their relationships business prestige status money uh, conveniences comforts in life they gave up everything they went after this band who didn't even have a pillow and a mat to give them to sleep because he didn't have a place to sleep how would he give them a mat and a pillow what does this mean now this is to be understood very carefully when you compare your love for the lord jesus christ with that of all the loves that you have in this world understand me you are you following back there near the fan two of you listening to me are you listening what am i saying are you listening are you listening yeah if when you compare your love for are you listening this is very very important 
when you compare your love for your father whom you love very much your mother your brother your sister your uncles your auntie and then everything else that you like in this world including your own life when you compare all of this with your love for jesus your love for all of this should look as if you hate it you are not asked to hate when you compare your love for all of this with that of your love for jesus your love for all of these relationships and things in this world will look as if it is hatred for it and that is not very easy to understand what is the cheapest sweets that you can buy in mumbai 1 rupee you get a handful that kind of cheap any such sweet you have in the shops 1 rupee you can buy plenty sajini sugar candy sugar candy now listen to me in in my one hand i give you a handful of sugar candy and in the other hand i give you a very nice cadbury milk chocolate which one will you take sneha which one will you take cadbury cadbury now you like your sugar sugar candy very much like you like it you like it yes but then when you compare it with your love for that mm cadbury your love for your sugar candy is like who oh, who wants it it's like hatred right you understand me are you following what i'm saying your love for your uh, sugar candy is very good very well nice you like it but then when it is compared with that of the cadbury milk chocolate bar your love for the sugar candy is like hatred who wants it throw it away right that is the comparison we are finding here your love for jesus is compared to the love you have for your daddy is far 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 above that of your daddy your love for your daddy your mommy your brother your sister your uncle your auntie your education you know when you look in the mirror you look very beautiful right you are all very beautiful you are all very handsome but when when you when you when you compare it with your love for jesus who cares about my being very beautiful or handsome i don't care because he gave his life for me i am ready to hate everything in this life in order to express my love for my jesus and that is what he is saying here and that is what these boys peter andrew john james they liked their daddy and their business and their fish and their net and their boat and their workers and their money and their position all of those but comparing that with their jesus jesus was far above everything else that they were ready to give up all of those and go after jesus is that now a little easier to understand now that is the way you become a disciple of jesus christ you are you are you are all your loves in this world will slowly give way to your love for jesus you love your daddy you pray for your daddy you care for your daddy your mommy your brother your sister and your own life you know you wash and you scrub and you comb and you uh, put some shade on your face and your eyes are drawn and and your uh, what's it called 
eyebrows are shaped and your mustache is trimmed and your beard is all of this you are doing because you love yourself too much but when you love your jesus in order to express your love to him you are ready and willing to make sure that your love for the rest is just like hatred for him and only when you do that you can truly become a disciple and follow after the lord jesus christ as your master and your lord and that is what he is asking us to do today and that means that you go where he wants you to go you do what he wants you to do you study what he wants you to study you do the kind of work that he wants you to do you marry the person that he wants you to marry you eat the kind of food that he wants you to eat not the chicken even some rice porridge water and green gram is fine praise the lord hallelujah and uncle sunil albert was asking you how many shoes you have so you love jesus so much that you're ready to give up the opportunity to buy that second shoes or that uh, 34th churidar or that fifth watch or that uh, seventh belt how many belts you have alan how many two what do you do with two belts one here and one here <laughs> i don't understand one for formal one for casual what do you mean by formal and casual now compare all of these challenges that the world is posing to you in comparison with your love for jesus christ now let me ask you a question you can only use one belt at a time so when you have two belts three belts i once visited a home of a brother many years ago young brother because i often work with young people and i found him having eight belts one after the other hanging in his closet i don't know what he does with eight belts one on the uh, angle one at the knee one one you are saying one for casual one for formal then what do you do with the other six is that true is that true now when you follow after jesus christ your craving for all of these things will come down i want to say a lot of things about all of this and we will speak continuously tomorrow and the day after so where he wants i will go what he wants i'll do what he wants me to study i will study where he wants me to work i will work where he wants me to stay i will stay what ministry he wants me to do i will do everything for jesus christ who is my master and my lord and i completely absolutely hmm unconditionally without reservation completely go after him and love him more than everything else in this world so if you have a job offer with 2 2 lakhs of rupees another job offer and then no time for the lord another job offer with 50000 rupees plenty of extra time for the lord which one will you take i know about bombay quite a lot a lot of our bombay brothers are after the 2 lakhs not only bombay trivandrum kochin people are always enticed by the world to take the best that the world offers so that you can say oh you know my son 2 lakhs and jesus is not able to get him he cannot even see him he is after the world i mean you need to talk about some of these things you have to make sure that your commitment to the lord jesus christ is such that all your commitment other commitments in this world are using apostle paul's language garbage now one quick 
sentence I make and then I close for the time being. If you are committed to Jesus Christ, you will also be committed to his bride. Hmm? His bride. Now, if you say, Oh, younger, I like you very much, so you are a wonderful preacher, we enjoy your Bible classes, but you don't even talk to Felicity Andy. You think Koshimati uncle will be very happy? Oh, I am very happy, everybody like me very much, I am very happy, you all hate my, my wife. Will, will he be, will he be happy, Koshimati uncle? You will be happy? No, you will not be happy. So if you say, oh Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you, and you don't have love for his bride, what is his bride's name? Bolo, you, don't look everywhere. Yeah, you are the one. Yes. What is his bride's name? What is his bride's name? Jesus' bride's name. Yeah, church. So when you love Jesus, you love his church also. Alright. Is this an interesting subject to study? We are, we are just about starting. We have some more classes and we will continue to study this. But remember, comparing your love for everything else in this world, as you do it with in comparison with Jesus, it's all like garbage. It's all like hatred. It's all like your love for that sugar candy, which is plenty available for a cheap price. May God continue to speak to you and continue to challenge you. And he says, if you love me, show it to me, show it to me. Listen, 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 listen. When God so loved the world, He sent a committee to save us, right? God so loved the world that He He gave a big long sermon, right? God so loved the world that He He gave. You so love the Lord, what do you do? You go to church every Sunday and say, Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. And then you go home and love the world. So, is that right? You go home and plug in your ears and say, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you, go, you go and study everything that the world is telling you to study so that you can get the biggest salary from IIT or IIM and become a great person in this world. Is that right? God loved the world and He... Give. You love the Lord? And you? Now tomorrow morning when we meet for our class, I want you to tell me one thing that you are ready to give up. To show that you love Jesus because He has challenged you to give greater priority to Him. Agreed? 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 Yes, we will, we will see what you are ready to give up. So we will now pray and uh, close this session. Uh, KV Simon Uncle, will you please come with your youthful vigor and vitality, come and close this session in prayer. Okay, as he comes, let's sing.